Hey guys, Daedalus Nix here again, and tonight I'm going to be talking about calibrating drill bits in order to magnetize weapons and um, models for Warhammer 40k. Um, probably fantasy, I just don't play fantasy, so whatever. Um, I will kind of warn you guys, I, again, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, and thankfully though you don't have to look at my fuzzy mug tonight in high definition because I've got this on a tripod. We are talking about a lot of close-up work here tonight. Alright. First order of business, materials needed. You will need a drill bit. Um, the drill bit needs to be the same size or no more than about a half millimeter bigger than the magnet you're working with. On the scale we're talking about for these models, that's going to be important. Uh, this is, I think, a two millimeter drill bit. You also need magnets. Cost Boys and KJ Magnetics are a couple favorites of mine, some shout outs there. Um, these are one and a half millimeter magnets. There's that half millimeter difference I'm telling you about. I recommend two other tools. A fancy name for it is a magnetic manipulator. The essential name of it is a metal paper clip that has been bent out slightly on one side so I have a nice little handle to work with and a nice little tip that the magnet will grab onto. Then a non-magnetic magnetic manipulator to pull out of. Optional but very recommended is the Citadel um, hand drill. Um, I think it's like $15 retail from um, Games Workshop. This is optional if you're working on plastic. It is mandatory if you're working on pewter models. So, when you buy it though, I will warn you, you might go through the same kind of, oh my god, freak out thing that I did. And seeing that this will not actually fit my drill bit. I was very upset. Flip it around, and this will fit at least a two millimeter, maybe slightly bigger drill bit. For the drill bit itself, I'm using one out of a Black & Decker drill set. I will try to address here in a minute as well the perils of reusing your drill bits. Um, if you don't want to reuse your drill bits for other systems, that's fine. Um, go down to your local hardware store, Walmart, what have you, and buy a drill bit in the size that you need. Um, any of the standard ones out there, you can buy them single, usually about four or five bucks, sometimes lower for some of the cheaper models, or you can buy Dremel bits, and I believe Dremel bits will fit in the Citadel hand drill. I've also seen people talk about using actual Dremel units. I'm personally not a fan of whirling blades right next to my finger, which is why I'm not using the Black & Decker drill itself. Plus, it removes out some of the precision in my mind. Next, you'll, well, finally, you'll also need some scotch tape, I'll talk about that in a second, and a piece of plastic you can drill into. Um, I've seen some people espousing using wood. My own personal experiences, actually on the previous take of this, which you won't see, tells me don't do that. Um, in my just infamous, I love to reuse things that I don't have to, so I don't have to spend money on other things. I'm using a gun drum sprue, and you will see that it's not the thickest of piece of plastic, but the scale of what we're talking about here, that's not necessarily critical. And to give you an idea of the scale we're talking about here, there on the head of that you can't really see it very well on there. Focus, of course, is bad as always. There on the head of this um, manipulator is the magnet that we're working with tonight. So, take my gun drum sprue. Yes, I could have just used the one from the other day. I couldn't find it. And I set my drill bit somewhere in the center of a nice chunk of plastic. Right over here looks good. There we go and give it a few nice solid turns. Yeah, now you'll see sometimes the bit will kind of seize up on me. That's unfortunately normal for the Games Workshop tool. It just happens. If anyone has a better recommendation of a hand drill, I would love to hear it. So anyway, nice few gentle turns. See some plastic kind of curling up there from the sprue itself. Blow those off. Blow it off. Now I've got a very shallow hole right now. I highly doubt you can see this on camera. There we go. I've got a very shallow hole right now. What I do, once I have a little bit of a hole, move the magnet in there. I see it's not really quite deep enough yet. Probably at least another three or four turns. So, back into the same hole I was drilling in. As long as you don't go too deep, you can go in. If you want to use green stuff to fill in, more power to you. I don't get along well with green stuff. There you go, it's a nice little curlage off there. Blow out the remnant dust. And once again, try to see this in here. What you want, oh, there we go. Nice and flush almost. What you want to see, 
It's a nice flush fit into the plastic for your magnet. You want that magnet to sit as close in there as you can. With just the barest hint of it sticking out. I'm hoping the light, yep, there we go. The light will show. The magnet's in there. And it is barely, actually, and I'm looking at it from the side, it's a little more up than I like. And you see that? Yeah. You see how you can really see from a distance that's up? Yeah, I don't like that. So, magnetic nuclear out. Probably about another two or three turns. And just a second here. I had a little bit of scrap in there. Some counterclockwise turns to help clean out. Reverse on your drills if you are crazy. Again, please don't use a power drill near your fingers. And if you do, don't sue me. I told you not to do it. Anyway, let's try to flush that in there. I'm sorry for the bad camera shit. There we go. It's in. It is barely visible from the side. Not visible from the top. Now, the reason why I go from barely visible from the side is that when it's actually on there, you got another one that you're going to magnetize. One on the model, one on the weapon or piece of equipment that you're magnetizing. That becomes an issue if uh, it's sticking out too much because then you're going to run into the situation of both of them are sticking out so much that the weapon looks kind of cocked. Now, some situations, I don't mind that. Um, such as Seeker missiles on some metal vehicles. I kind of like that sticking out a little bit there. Um, some of the weapons on the crisis suit, I actually don't mind that on. But I address that, actually most of the weapons on the crisis suit, but I actually address that on the video for the crisis suits. Now I need to pull my drill bit back out. This is going to be the tough part. Pull the drill bit out, sit it in the hole here. Then take a piece of the scotch tape and get it once again as flush to that plastic as I can get it. Yeah, that is a small, small, small thing. And then wrap that tape around the drill bit. Now what I've done, I'll put it back on my drill to demonstrate. Because I've got two things going on here. One, I've got a piece of plastic. It really helps if I remember the directions to tighten these things. I've got a piece of plastic here that's been perfectly calibrated for my magnet. And now I've got a drill bit that if I go slow enough when I drill, I will see right as it starts to hit that tape. Once it hits that tape, I know that I'm at the same point for the thing. Let's verify before I end this video. Push it in there. Now I know I'm not completely there yet, I'm just having to clear out my plastic that I drill a lot more. This is even though it's taking a little more time. There we go. As soon as I twist, I feel the resistance of that tape hitting there. And once again to verify, take the magnet, pop it in there. And I got a little bit of flash in there still, but that's okay. Yes, and I just did realize I did not use the non-magnetic manipulator little cocktail plastic thing. Ah, hang on. I still got too much flash in there. <laughs> yeah, again, you guys can see how much prep I put into these videos for you. There we go. It's in. A little tap of my overly long fingernails. It's flush. It's good. So now what I can do is I can snip these. Stick those in my toolbox, these little holes. Stick them in my toolbox so I can recalibrate. If I ever should have to use this bit, or actually work again, then I can just simply take the bit up, the tape off, and then use it for the drill when I'm done. Use the plastic to recalibrate. Alright, that is calibrating your drill bit for using uh, to magnetize with very, very tiny magnets. And hopefully the next video will be on magnetizing a actual battle suit. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.